Okay, so Monopon came in clutch again, and around 3 a.m. they dropped some more information as was expected, but no one thought they'd actually fuck around and drop some more gameplay. So we have two gameplay clips they dropped and over on Twitter, but we're, for the video at least, we're going to be looking at it through Nintendo Everything's video. They uploaded the two clips together into one big video. So I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't trying to go and download them and put them together and all that, whatever. It's just doing too much. So it's easier to just do it here. But yes, I'm giving credit to Nintendo Everything for this video. And so the link to this video will be in the description as well as Monopon tweets. And for those who don't know, Monopon is just the Japanese the Japanese you know, play 3 Twitter account. But yeah, we're going to be analyzing this gameplay, you know? So this might be another hour-long video off of just 20 seconds of gameplay. But yeah, uh, let's actually get into it. Mina. So this is obviously early in the game because we're only level 13. And if you look at the area around here, it looks... A lot like Oblivia from Xenoblade X and if you look up at the top by the health bar it looks like there's that little piece of land just floating like it's not it's not really connected to anything but um, we do see returning enemies we see an ass bar in the back the snake level 14 we see this enemy that the party's about to fight, I forgot the name of it, but this is a returning enemy. And then we see that big tyrant thing right there. So that we saw in the very first trailer. But yeah, obviously everything's in Japanese. Um, everything's still the same except for over here by Iuni, there's an A button prompt. Um, I'm not really sure what that is supposed to mean. Maybe that's kind of like a uh, burst affinity from Xenoblade 1. Maybe they're bringing that back and they're just showing it in a little, um, they're just showing it in a little bubble or sword icon by the front or by the on the right. <laughs> So it seems like I was right and the red line going from the enemy to the main or like the character you're controlling is aggro. So it is like Fire Emblem Three Houses where the red line like arcing over is aggro. And we see over here on the left, if you like watch during this whole combat section, there's just buffs everywhere. Mina, so. Okay, so this actually tells a lot of information. First of all, on the left, if you look over here on the left under Senna, there's a red exclamation point with 276 meters under it. That is the quest. That is the quest marker. So instead of like Xenoblade 2, where we had quest marker at the top of the screen, and it just moved relative to which direction you were facing, we actually have it like a real on-screen marker so it's a lot easier to tell where you're supposed to be going and then over in the bottom right corner we see it says navi on with the y button um i'm not really sure what that says um so we do have some translations so i'll get to those in a minute um, but it seems like the Y button is to toggle the objective like in 
Xenoblade 2 with ZR, you can see the objective or not. And it looks like it's like a mix of Xenoblade 1 and 2 because Xenoblade 2, you can press ZR to see, oh, what your current objective is. And then in Xenoblade 1, at least in DE, you can cycle between side quest and the main story quest in that little menu right there. And so Y is to probably bring up the menu. And I actually have a screenshot right here. Anel and Million Man. Anel was asking Million Man to translate what they said at the very bottom right corner and up at the top under the map. As you can see right here, at least down by the Y button, according to Million, Million Man, it says current objective. And then up here underneath the map, it possibly says Wastelands, the Great Plate of Ration. So back to the Great Plate of Ration is probably an area, and that would be on the, the bottom of the like the uh, the two words and then the top would be wastelands so this I mean, I mean this area already looks a lot like oblivia as it is and we actually get a name of one of the areas and the map if you look at the map you can toggle the map with the r stick and up at the top of the map near the little north icon that question mark that is most likely a quest so like in xenoblade x if you looked at the map any character with or any question mark on the map was a quest you could receive from an npc and then obviously the red exclamation point is either the story event like the story quest or an active quest and there's a little there's a little like icon just underneath that in like the bottom left corner of the map. I have no idea what that could be. Maybe that's, it's not a collection point because the little dots come back as collection points in Xenoblade 3. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what that could mean. And then underneath like the Japanese text underneath the map, there's like a little card type of icon it looks like a little id card type of icon um i don't i don't i don't really know here before the video ends we get a bigger look at the we get a bigger look at the area and this looks like it could actually be on the fallen arm even though it says the plate of russian that could be an area on the fallen arm because if you look at the top a little mountain range or whatever that kind of looks like gears or it's like in the shape of some type of mechanical thing so this could be an area on the fallen arm and I mean the fallen arm wasn't that big in Xenoblade 1 but if we saw in the first trailer for Xenoblade 3 that there's like a lot of land that grew around the fallen arm and a lot of like deserty type of wasteland. So this could very well be near or on the fallen arm. And it looks like all the party members will be out on the field at once. So, I mean, it's been like that for every game, but having six characters out on the field at once, I mean, it's, I guess it's nothing new because Xenoblade 3 or 2, we had the three drivers and then the three blades. But in Xenoblade 3, all the party members are active in battle. They all do their own thing. So in Xenoblade 2, the blades would just stand back and power up the uh, driver and occasionally throw um, blade arts. Here, every character is active at all times in battle and on the field. 
So that's really nice. That's really nice to see. And I don't know if it's just positioned that way, but lands and center are together. And then Mio and Uni are together with Tyon and Noah together. Even though Mio and Noah should be together. I don't know. That could not mean anything, but maybe we could swap like who is paired with who. Um, we've only, they've only told us that, oh, only Mio, Noah can interlink with each other, Lance and Senna interlink with each other, and then Uni and Tyan can interlink with each other. Maybe there's something they're not telling us, and we can actually, like, mix and match the interlinks in the game, and they're just saving that for when the game drops. I really doubt it, but I don't know. I'm probably just looking way too much into it and their relative positions on the field mean absolutely nothing. <laughs> but no, this this was very exciting to see. They kind of just drop new gameplay out of nowhere. <laughs> And I just noticed something. Um, I don't really know how else to. I might just put like an arrow or something. But up here on the rock above the, above the tactics menu, there's like a glowing green spot right there. So I don't. You see that on the rock right there? There's a glowing green spot. So maybe that could be like a quest item, you know, in Xenoblade 1 with um, the little items or whatever, little item orbs, the blue orbs for items like collection spots or dots, I guess. Um, whenever there was like a quest item, it would be red instead of blue. So maybe this is what this is. Maybe instead of purple, it's green and it has like a little flare on it to better sim signify a quest item or make it more recognizable um yeah i don't i don't i don't really know but this this landscape just looks so so cool and you can see back there like towards the right um it kind of like transitions into like a sandy area so that could be the left area earth sea area that we saw in the initial trailer but yeah, this 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 gameplay looks really goddamn cool. It looks so good. And then there's that tyrant thing right there. Um, considering we've seen like two of those, maybe those aren't tyrants, and those are like just regular enemies, just late game enemies. And if that's the case, I'm kind of scared to see what a tyrant will look like, because oh goddamn! Imagine if we get like another Farsis the Ever Queen. From Xenoblade X, we get another one of those, or like another Telethia Endbringer. That would be actually insane. <laughs> and I think the name actually changes for the enemy. Because right here, whatever that says right there on the health bar, that changes near the end of this clip. So maybe the name changes to whatever art that the enemy is using, or at least like whatever art they're using overlays the name so you can clearly see what art they're using. Yeah, see the art, the name changed like right before it cut out. So, I don't know, that could, I don't know what that means Because we've seen art names overlay the enemy names in the, actually the release date trailer So, whenever they use an art, their art will just show where their name is at Until it, you know, just goes away And then, also we actually got this cool little 
shot right here, a little couple seconds of all the characters summoning their weapons that Monopon also dropped. Uh, they're just really fluid and smooth to show all the characters can just materialize their weapons out of thin air. So, and there was a deleted tweet from like Nintendo UK about uh, weapons, about the characters' weapons. And how they called them blades with air quotes and went into an explanation about that so it's really suspicious that they deleted that that uh tweet talking about blades so i mean you know i'm not saying nothing but i'm saying something okay <laughs> so i'm not i'm not gonna speculate too much on that but this these two clips three i guess of is these two and then the one where they like summoning their weapons. But yeah, this is this is really really interesting to see. And I'm going to be rewatching this like all day. It's so it's so good. It's funny though. Because the everything here is in Japanese, but then Navi on and caution are still in English. Just so, like what what okay. why is everything in Japanese and then caution and navi on are still in English that that doesn't I don't know maybe it's some like build of some, like developer build type of um footage or whatever but yeah, the enemies seem very detailed. The just environment itself is very detailed. I like how the shading with the shadows and everything just looks so, so good. But yeah, this this all just looks so so good. But yeah, that's that's really that's really about it. And of course, no surprise, I really spent like twenty minutes <laughs> just discussing like discussing like twenty seconds of gameplay. I don't know why I do this. I just get carried away because I just get so hype about this game. I swear. And oh, um, we also got a release date trailer for Splatoon three. And we got some new turf war gameplay, so I might also make a video about that. Uh, so, yeah, but that's about it for this video. Um, I was not planning on making this video because this information kind of just dropped out of nowhere. And I guess, hey, double up, dual upload today. So two videos today. But yeah, kind of nice. But yeah, that's about it. As always, thanks for watching. Have a damn, damn, damn good day. Stay safe. <laughs> Be well and please some goddamn.